What's up, everybody? Mr. Turner's back with you on the YouTube to explain what we're doing today and going through our biodiversity and invasive species notes. So obviously, I'm not in the class, but I am here in your screens explaining what is going on. So first and foremost, we're going to head over to our weekly agenda in e -Kampai. And here we are. So just quick review. Monday, we took our test. Wednesday, we went, Tuesday, Wednesday, we went over biodiversity and classification. And many of you have already completed uh, that assignment for task four from Wednesday. And it is due Friday night by 11.59 p.m. So make sure that gets taken care of and turned in. We do not want anybody to be missing out on that. We're going to do three tasks today, talk a little bit about biodiversity and invasive species, then go over our Florida's invasive species research um, assignment. And task three is to just rate yourself and uh, track your success. So here we go with entry number 15, biodiversity and invasive species. Biodiversity and invasive species. So the unknown biodiversity, biodiversity is an unfinished task of cataloging all the species that exist on earth. The number of species that are known to science is about 1.7 million, and most of them are insects. Actual number of species on earth is technically unknown because we're discovering new ones all the time, but scientists estimate that there are more than 10 million different species. Certain areas of the planet, like tropical rainforests, contain an extraordinary variety of species. Yes, I went through and purpleized this for you, so you don't need to write anything down on this slide, but we will write a little bit down later. Here's a graphic with biodiversity. You can see insects are the largest section by a lot, with about 950,000 different types of insects. So many of them, the dark orange, are the ones that we know about. The light orange color are the ones that we estimate that there might be more. You can see at the very bottom, there's a sliver for the invertebrates, most of, or for the vertebrates, most of those we know, but there are some that we have no recollection of yet. We just haven't discovered them, but you can see the smallest group is the vertebrates and most of them are known. Levels of biodiversity. Biodiversity can be studied and described at three levels. We start at species diversity, which is the differences between populations of a species as well as different species working together. Then we have ecosystem diversity, which is the variety of habitats, communities, and ecological processes within an ecosystem. And finally, we have genetic diversity, which is the different genes contained in the members of the population. Good genes get passed on down to further generations. We'll talk about a lot of this when we get into our next unit on evolution, because a lot of genetic diversity is super important for evolution. Now we got some purple. So species are connected to ecosystems. Every species is dependent or dependent on by at least one other species. When one species disappears from an ecosystem, a strand of the food web is removed. So yes, us humans depend on lots of other species to survive. We depend on plants and animals for food because we are heterotrophs and we do not make our own food like plants do as autotrophs. A keystone species, purple alert, a species that is critical to the functioning of an ecosystem because it affects the survival of many other species in its community. An example of this is the sea otter, my favorite. The loss of the sea otter population led to the sea urchin population booming because there was nothing to eat them. And unfortunately, with a huge sea urchin population, they eat all the kelp beds. And so the kelp beds, beds actually disappeared as a result of the sea otter populations going down. So a keystone species is a species that is critical to the functioning of an ecosystem because it affects the survival of many other species in its community. Two types of species that are prone to extinction an endangered species, a species that has been identified to be in danger of extinction throughout all or a significant part of its range. So its area that it, it lives, either all of it or at least the most 
or the largest chunk of it, it's in danger of going extinct. We have threatened species that are identified to be becoming endangered in the foreseeable near future. So endangered, they're in danger of extinction now. Threatened, their numbers are so low that in the near future, they could become endangered and then extinct. So that's kind of the difference between endangered and threatened species. How do humans accelerate extinctions? Over the past 200 years, the human population rate has grown exponentially, but so has the rate of extinctions. Major causes of extinctions today are the destruction of habitats, introduction of non-native invasive species, which we're going to talk about in a second, pollution, and overfishing or overharvesting of food by humans. So here's just a list of threatened and endangered species and how many of them are on that threatened or endangered species list. You can see that mammals are quite high, but plants are definitely the most endangered and the most identified endangered species. So we have two things to write down here. Invasive species is an organism that is not native to a particular area and it causes great economic and environmental harm to its new area. Not all non-native species are invasive. Some can be beneficial. So if a non-native species does not cause harm, it is not considered invasive. Examples would be like crops and many ornamental plants. We grow lemons and oranges and citrus in Florida. Um, and not all of them are native to the Florida area. In fact, most of them aren't, but they can grow and prosper, but we can manage them so they are not invasive. Invasive species adapt to new areas easily, often outcompeting native species for resources like food, water, and space. So a lot of times, like our python in the Everglades, is outcompeting alligators and other species for their food water and space. And that's why they are an invasive species. They are actually reducing the populations of small mammals like rabbits and raccoons, and even the native birds because they are eating them so quickly that they are outpacing um, the ability for native species to survive. Invasive species are referred to as exotic species sometimes. Exotic species can threaten native species that have no natural defenses against them. So invasive species sometimes thrive because there's no predators to hunt them in their new area. So here we have a python and an alligator, and they're actually um, battling each other right there. And the python's head is kind of by the alligator's arm, and the python's body is inside the alligator's mouth, and they're constrictors, so it's trying to constrict and choke the alligator out here. Areas of critical biodiversity, an important feature of areas of the world that contain greater diversity of species is that they have large portions of endemic species. An endemic species, you're going to write this one down, is a species that is native to a particular place and that is found only there. So it's only found in that location. And a prime example of this in Florida is our Florida key deer. They are super cool. They are like normal white-tailed deers, except they're like <laughs> compacted down into a smaller body. So our key deer are about the size of a large dog, but they're a subspecies of the white-tailed deer. So they're super cool. They're only found in the Florida Keys. They've adapted um, to, to thrive there um, in the Keys, and they're smaller because there's only so many resources that can keep them fed and alive and happy. So they're an endemic species. They are only found in the Florida Keys, and they are super cool. Ecologists often use the numbers of endemic plant species as an indicator of the overall health and the biodiversity of the area. Areas of critical diverse biodiversity, we have tropical rainforests. It's estimated that over 50% of the world's species live in rainforests, but they only cover 7% of Earth's actual land. So 50% of the species and 7% of the land. That's crazy. Most of these species not even been discovered yet. 
Islands, reefs, and coastal ecosystems like swamps, marshes, shores, and kelp beds provide millions of people with resources, but are constantly threatened by human activities such as pollution, development, and overfishing. And many islands hold very distinct but limited sets of species that are native to those islands and areas. The most threatened areas of high species diversity on Earth have been labeled as biodiversity hotspots and include mostly tropical rainforests, coastal areas, and islands. Most of these hotspots have lost at least 70% of their original vegetation due to human impact. So here we have a map. You can see in the middle we got Florida. The south part of Florida um, in the Everglades is definitely one of these hotspots. You also have over in Indio Borneo, New Zealand, Madagascar, South America has the rainforest. So these are all your biodiversity hotspots. Legal protection for species. Many nations have laws and regulations designed to prevent the extinction of species. The United States passed the 19, in 1973 the Endangered Species Act, which is designed to protect any plant or animal species in danger of extinction. And you can see since 1973, the number of endangered species, endangered species has risen. So in, about, in 2007, we had about 8,000 endangered species. And currently in 2019, we have about 14,000 plus species that are on the endangered species list. So that is all for our notes today. I'm going to briefly explain um, what task two looks like. We're going to look at Florida's invasive species research. So a little preview of your assignment here. Invasive, the invasion of the Florida Peninsula. We're going to look at five invasive plant species to start out with. So you're going to look them up. You're going to tell me the common name of them, like Brazilian pepper tree, the scientific name, where it's located in Florida, the date it was introduced, when it, what caused that introduction, the damage it caused, and ways that we can prevent or eradicate the issue. The second part of this is we're gonna look at five different invasive animal species, like the lionfish, that are located in Florida and explain the same things. So I have listed multiple different websites here. Three of them are focused on plants and then the non-native fish and Department of Wildlife's website is the last one, which is focused more on the fish and wildlife, so the animals there, um, but you can use any other Google source um, as well. The first one is a plant directory on invasive species. It does a great job of going through. The ones that are in, it covers all the plants in Florida, and it the ones that are invasive are labeled in a little box that says invasive, and it's dark red. There's other red boxes that say other things like weeds or things like of that nature, but we're looking for the ones that say invasive. We also have the USF, which is University of South Florida out of Tampa. It's their Invasive Plant Species Mobile Field Guide. Um, it's great. This one focuses solely on the invasive plant species. Then we have an exotic pest and invasive plant list by the Florida Exotic Pest Plant Council Invasives. So you can use that one. And then the Florida Fish and Wildlife came up with the one for animals. So you can use these resources. If you need to look somewhere else to find these resources, you can. Um, but that's what we're working on. We got our invasive plant species. We're going to research five of them. We have our invasive animal species. We're going to look at five of those. And then we're going to have a phenomenal, phenomenal weekend. So quick review. We have our assignment due Friday night, biodiversity and classification. That is the Google Slides assignment um, where you are also using those species cards to compare um, species. Sunday night, your invasive species research project is due. It's just filling out those two pages. You can make it happen. And task three is to rate yourself. And task four is to have a great weekend. I will see you guys on Monday. Remember, stay safe. And as always, be legendary.